I've got my eye on you. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about ions in this video. Um, remember a couple videos back, we started talking about uh, the octet rule and how um, different elements are usually more stable when they have eight full electrons in their valence shell or sometimes they lose all their valence electrons so that they are stable. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is what they become when they either lose or they gain different amounts of electrons and that would be an ion. Get it? Ion. So, um, you might be wondering why I'm wearing this hat. It's because I didn't feel like doing my hair. There you go. Um, so when we talk about ions, we're going to take a look at our lovely whiteboard again. All right. We're going to do some Lewis dot structures, and I know that we've done these before. So um, we're on ptable.com right now, and I'm going to take a look at oxygen because oxygen is pretty sweet. So um, if you look at oxygen, again, oxygen is not in group 1A or 2A or 3A or 4A or 5A. It's in group 6A. So you draw the symbol for the Lewis dot structure. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So if we look at oxygen, Oxygen is not stable right now because it wants a full valence shell. So it wants like another extra electron there and another electron there. Sorry, I was drawing those as circles so you can see those are the ones that are not currently there. Um, but it only has those six electrons. So um, it needs to find something else that would, you know, want to give up some electrons. So we're going to take a look at another element as well. We're going to look at magnesium. And if you look at magnesium on the periodic table, it is in group 2A. So let's write Mg. All right, Mg has one, two electrons because it is in group 2A. You guys remember that? So what can happen sometimes with these different things so that they become stable, different elements will either want to give up electrons or they will want to collect electrons. Um, these ones that give up electrons are called donors, okay, electron donors, and then these ones that will pick them up are called the electron recipients, all right, um, real quick, if we looked at magnesium's full bore uh, model, it would be something like this. We're going to have magnesium in the middle, and magnesium, again, it has 12 protons, and it also has 12 neutrons. So um, I shouldn't have drawn it like that. We do 12 positives, 12 neutral charges, and that's in its inner shell. It's uh, nucleus. Um, its inner shell is going to have two electrons, because remember, the inner shell can hold two. The next one holds eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretend there's charges on those that are negative charges. And then it is number 12. So it actually has two more. All right. And we'll just put those extra two over here. All right. And these two electrons that are on this valence shell for magnesium right now represent those two right there. Remember for the Lewis dot structures. <clears throat> When we look at this, we said that magnesium wants to be stable. So it has two options here. It could either pick up one, two, three, four, five, six more electrons to become stable and have a full outer shell, or it could lose these two, go back a shell so that it has a full shell right here. Okay, because again, this one had two, four, six, eight different electrons. So I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. Do you think it would be easier? to give up two, or to pick up six. I hope you said it'd be easier to just get rid of two, because that's what it does, all right? Um, this one is gonna get rid of the two, okay? I'm gonna erase this whole bore model. I was just showing you what it does. So it ejects those two. <laughs> and so on our Lewis dot structure, we would just show we got rid of these two. But now we're gonna do a little math off to the side here and show you something else. Um, remember, initially it had 12 electrons and 12 protons. We just got rid of two of these, so we only have 10 electrons now. If you have 12 positive charges and 10 negative charges, your overall charge now is no longer neutral. 
it's actually going to be a plus 2. So this thing that I drew here, Mg plus 2, that is actually the Lewis dot structure for magnesium as an ion, the magnesium ion. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing with oxygen. Oxygen is number 8 on the periodic table, so we're going to draw its Bohr structure. It has 8 protons, and it actually also had 8 neutrons. Okay, Inner shell can hold 2, negative, negative. And then it's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And remember, to be stable, what it wants to do is it wants to either pick up two to have a full shell here or get rid of six. For oxygen, the easier thing to do is just to pick up the two extra electrons. So if magnesium or something else had some electrons that were free floating around somewhere else, it would eject them and then oxygen could pick them up. So boom, boom, negative, negative charge. Now I'm gonna erase this Bohr model real quick. Go back to the Lewis dot structure. Um, when we look at the Lewis dot structure for oxygen, <clears throat> it normally had eight protons and eight electrons, making it electrically neutral. But what we said is it can just pick up two more, so dot dot, and that means that we actually have a negative 10 charge. Sorry, that's a little schmeary. Um, this would be what we have to do now. You have to put a negative two charge out in front of the oxygen to show that it's an ion, okay? So here's the deal, guys. Ions are just electrically charged particles. And they're electrically charged atoms. If you are in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A, you will lose electrons. It's easier for you to just lose them so that you go back a shell, just kind of like we did with magnesium. Okay, if you're in groups 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, it is easier for you to gain electrons, okay, and pick them up so you become this negatively charged particle, all right? Now, you guys will notice that when I said group 4A, I said it as something that would lose electrons and pick up electrons. That is true. So when you look at carbon, silicon, and then some of the other ones going down in um, 4A, because they already have four valence electrons, it's not easier to pick up four or lose four. Both of them are gonna be the same amount of work. So it does both kind of. <clears throat> All right, so real quick, just as a practice, pause the video. I'm gonna have you guys do the uh, Lewis dot structure for the ion calcium, okay? So here's calcium normally, boom, boom. Pause the video and create your Lewis dot structure for what it would look like. All right, now, when you turn it back and you're looking at what it would do, it would lose these two, becoming a positive two charge. All right, let's do one more. Um, do the Lewis dot structure for chlorine. All right, chlorine right now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so pause the video, do your Lewis dot structure for what it would look like as an ion. Okay. <clears throat> All right, coming back here, when you look at this one, it would be easier to pick up one electron, so it would pick up the one and become a negative one charge there, okay? Um, if you're trying to remember positive charges are what we call, if sorry, if an element becomes a positively charged ion, we call that a cation, okay? How can you remember that? Well, cations, oh, I'm going to go to a different picture here. Okay. Cations have a positive charge, and I think I said that in an earlier video. Um, cations have a positive charge. Okay. These negatively charged ions are called anions. Okay. So if it gains electrons, it gets a negative charge, and they're called anions. How can you remember that? Well, if I eat a bunch of anions. <sighs> Oh, it's gross and it's a negative experience okay so that's how they get a negative charge there all right so um, we're looking at ions again and then doing their Lewis dot structures ions are all about gaining or losing electrons in your valence shell if you gain electrons 
you're going to fill up your shell and you become an anion with a negative charge. If you lose electrons, um, then you go back a shell and you become positively charged and that would be a cation. Um, we're going to take a look at all this stuff and it's going to be important to master this because it's going to be important for what we call ionic bonding. So this is the first step towards ionic bonding. Um, if you have any questions, email me and um, yeah, have a good day.